Mexico, it's Roman. Let's go bowling. I ain't changed. I'm still a bad man. I was very young and very angry. Maybe that is no excuse. I've got a very important announcement about one of the most powerful gaming experiences of all time. That's all I am, a killer. Crazy man. But in the time that you have left, don't compromise. You know, nothing means more to me than this gang. The bond we share. Shut up, sit down, relax. We've been putting time in the hood, but we gotta get the homies back together. Life is complicated. Hey, you did real fine, kid. I'm talking about a franchise that generates more excitement than almost anything else out there. Not just in our industry, but in all of entertainment. We always try and bite off more than we can chew. If you don't do that, you're going to do what you did last time. By so always being more ambitious than ever seems sensible. Oh, street. Oh, why did I move here? Microsoft and Rockstar Games are bringing Grand Theft Auto 4, the next generation of the wildly successful Grand Theft Auto series, to Xbox 360. This is bigger than the opening of a big blockbuster movie. Life was good. Sun setting on Sweet Summer's Day. Truly realized, truly immersive, living, breathing world. This is what we live for. What was the first Rockstar game you played? Did it stand out from most of the other games that you played? I've made an absurd amount of videos criticizing Rockstar games. I didn't make the problem with GTA Online because I hate Rockstar games or GTA Online. I made it because I like it so much that I don't want it to fall apart. I don't want to lose the game, or the studio you could say, that I grew up with. Rockstar Games has lost its original creative heads. I'm worried about its future, but there's really nothing else I can do about it. I've said everything I could say. I've pled the case for the soul of the company to return to its old ways a million times, a million different ways. All that's left to say for me, the only thing left worth talking about, is the reason I made the videos in the first place. The reason I loved Rockstar Games before any of this started. The original Rockstar Games. This half of the series isn't for the Rockstar Games that stands today. This half of the series is for the original Rockstar Games. For the people that worked there, the creative developers, the leadership of the time, the heart and soul that once was. Rockstar may currently be a shadow of their former self, but this video is about the Rockstar Games of the past, the Rockstar that casts that shadow. Nearly every single part of this series is sponsored by Brilliant. Without Brilliant, I wouldn't have access to over 60 different interactive courses. These lessons are much more than simple video lectures. You exercise everything you're learning while you're learning it. And it's cool that they found a way to make sometimes difficult ideas fun to study. Have you ever wondered how Bitcoin works? The cryptocurrency course teaches you about the blockchain technology. You even learn how to maintain and secure a cryptocurrency for yourself if you're interested in that sort of thing. Or you you can try programming with Python. It's a great first language for new programmers. It can be used for everything from video games to data visualization to machine learning. Right from the start, this course will show you how to use Python to create intricate drawings, coded messages, and more. No experience is even required to start this course and get moving. If these examples aren't for you, then they have plenty of others to choose from, extensively covering math, science, and computer science. Boost your creative problem-solving skills today and enjoy learning the fun way with hands-on lessons, colorful exercises, interactive components, and entertaining visuals. Join the millions of people already learning on Brilliant with a special offer just for my viewers. Go to brilliant.org darkspace to get started for free with Brilliant's interactive lessons. The first 200 visitors will also get 20% off an annual membership. And thank you again to Brilliant for sponsoring pretty much this entire series. Um, Rockstar was founded with a mission statement that video games were the next mass market entertainment medium, that they were uniquely interesting and powerful, and that we as a company 
would serve two masters to prove this fact, combining the production values of movies with an obsession with gameplay above all else. This is Dan Hauser, the then vice president of creative at Rockstar Games. He and his brother Sam on the right founded Rockstar Games along with Terry Donovan, Gary Foreman, and Jamie King. Of all of these people, Sam Hauser is currently the only one left at Rockstar Games. The company is currently in his control, and its future lies in his hands. Everyone you see here was instrumental in many of Rockstar Games' massive titles. The mission statement is what Rockstar Games was all about. Premium quality games. Here's what sets Rockstar Games apart from other studios. Rockstar Games are technical masterpieces. GTA 4 made a huge step in innovating from its predecessors. The physics gave the series a life that it never had before. In earlier games, you could phase right through car doors as if they didn't exist. Running over bodies on the ground would behave similarly, or running people over would feel like you hit a soft wall and the person you hit would become a solid object sliding on the car. This was big for its time, but Rockstar never stagnated. They always moved forward significantly. In GTA 4, vehicle doors were real, tangible objects that took on physical properties of their own. Not only that, but if destroyed, could become projectiles, or if still attached, could be used as cover. What was once a fake door took on an entire personality and gameplay mechanics. Running people over would cause them to react like humans do, bracing themselves, extending their arms, and if they're hit, they fly over the car like you'd imagine if you're weird and sit around imagining stuff like that. This reactionary animation wasn't pre-made or pre-animated. This was simulated on the fly, situationally, using the Euphoria physics. Few other games took advantage of Euphoria. Games like Star Wars The Force Unleashed did, and that's why the enemies in that game felt real. Shooting someone causes them to grab the area you shot in pain. Pushing people downstairs or off ledges didn't look like you were pushing a static object off an incline, it looked natural. I may be the only person that liked the driving physics in GTA 4, but I did. Looking back, sure, it's a bit weird, but the cars felt heavy. They had an impact. Jumping out of them also felt intense. I can't think of one game that has driving physics as good as GTA 5, GTA 4, and San Andreas. Other games just feel strange. The Watch Dogs series is the perfect example of missing the mark. It looks like a car, but the illusion falls apart the moment you start driving it and testing the physics out on it. Turning can be weird, crashing feels awkward, and there are just all sorts of strange things going on. But in GTA, it feels right. It feels real, like an actual object is being simulated. Vehicle damage hit its peak in GTA 4. I used to try to flatten cars by smashing them repeatedly, or driving them off buildings and watching them smash and crumple. This is another reason why the cars felt heavy and real, because flying a car into a wall at full speed would crush the front of the car and fling you out of the windshield. Nobody had seen anything like this. Just compare GTA 4 to the games it competed with. There's no competition. Flying too close to a building with a helicopter breaks your blades and causes your fuselage to free fall to the earth, killing you. Likely one of the hardest methods of transport to simulate would have to be horseback riding, yet Rockstar fully embraces it in Red Dead Redemption. Horseback riding is reactive and intuitive. They found a way to make a joystick and some buttons play naturally through controlling an animal with four legs while shooting or rope casting. Red Dead lets you rope players and NPCs and the physics are extremely realistic. Dragging someone causes the character to strain. Dragging their heavy body around looks real. The rope doesn't phase through objects, but rather it tangles and gets caught on trees and anything else in its path. The physics in a Rockstar title grounded in reality, but it's not only immersive, it's fun to play with. Most games limit you to the street or force you to stay in your car. Cyberpunk keeps you on the ground, looking up, wondering what it's like above. Boundaries limit you in Halo, telling you to turn back, otherwise you're threatened with death. Invisible walls plague most games, reminding you that you have to stay in the predetermined area, taking you out of the game entirely. Invisible walls, return to battlefield signs, boundaries, anything like that are all immersion breaking. But in Rockstar games like GTA, you're on an island, an island in the middle of the ocean, 
and you can explore every inch of that island in free mode. The streets, buildings, heights, mountains, and even the clouds. If you see it, you can scale it, get to it, and explore it. The sense of exploring these massive worlds, even for the PlayStation 2 at the time, to me felt huge. The good sense of RP, like legitimately, you could get out of your car, walk around, act like a normal human being. There's such a big world to explore. Every day without fail, I would just play in that free run. I, I wouldn't even do the story. Some buildings in the older GTA games could be entered. San Andreas and Vice City had select interiors that could be accessed through a loading screen. When GTA 4 came out, you could enter rooms and buildings without a load screen. You just walked in. This was a major leap from what we were used to. Red Dead Dead 2 lets you enter most of the buildings you find, and if the building is fake, the character will still attempt to open the door. Freedom isn't just about exploration, it's about what you can do. Fight cops and see how long you can last, fly around in a flying car, become a taxi or bus driver, ride down a mountain on a bike, work out at the gym, become a paramedic, pretend to be Batman, listen to the radio, become a cop. Or, like every GTA player has done at least once in their lives, follow the traffic laws. Stroll through towns on your horse, sit down and play poker, just, it's timeless. You can race cars, do highs. And even when you had so much amazing content, Rockstar would still tell you that you didn't have to do any of it. You could do whatever you wanted. Cheat codes unlocked the limits of the sandbox, allowing you to do anything you felt like doing in that moment. Cheat codes were instrumental to the success of GTA. San Andreas benefited the most from cheats, and these cheat codes didn't stop at spawning vehicles. No, they put the effort in for creative cheat codes, like Chaos Mode, where people are running around as if it's Armageddon stealing TVs and lighting fires on buildings. When you get to use the cheat code to just spawn in a tank or flying cars or just just whatever random cheats that they had for those games especially san andreas the games back then before the rage era had cheat codes that were actually so fun to use there was limitless possibilities of what you could combine it with the freedom is expressed in the vehicles you can control you can drive bikes cars motorcycles horses wagons rc cars buses vans skateboards trains boats airplanes jets helicopters you could drive anything you play a guy that can walk around freely in an entire city and get into any car he'd like that just blew my mind. Everything you saw was yours to play with. At a time when this type of freedom was unheard of, Rockstar gave us a game that let you do anything you wanted in a massive city, a sandbox. I like it. Uh, the best at the time, back in 2000 era. Grand Theft Auto 4 has to be my favorite out of the series to date due to its complexity, unseen in gaming at this point in time of release back in 2008. For a kid, at least for me when I was a kid, GTA was the ultimate way to express my imagination. I would pretend to do all sorts of things, stupid things, cringy things. I could explore anything and everything. GTA was the ultimate sandbox playground. For a studio to create an entire world with all of these toys and entire stories at a time when no one else was doing it, they had to have ambition. They put out quality game after quality game year after year. They achieved quality and quantity. Not only that, but each game massively improved and innovated beyond the scope of the previous game. Rockstar games are leagues above the competition in every category. Their brand evokes thoughts of ambition, achievement, and excellence. Each project they go into is bigger and better than the last. They did this by taking risks, going where others didn't. They are the golden standard of video games. They break records and make history. Their high standards inspire players and show them what is really possible, despite what other lazy studios throw together and sell to them. They had confidence in themselves. They knew what they had set out to accomplish and they followed through. They could be trusted to never communicate with the players because the players knew that they were going to deliver. I really enjoy, you know, their ability to just deliver exceptional games, to develop very good games, like we're talking about masterpieces, without really communicating that much with the fan base by just telepathically knowing what 
what the fanbase actually wants and enjoys. This IGN review pretty much sums up how great their games are. This review goes back to 2004 when San Andreas was released. Grand Theft Auto San Andreas is the single best PlayStation 2 title I have ever played. It's larger than the biggest RPG, has more story than the heftiest adventure game, and has almost as many mini games as Nintendo's Mario Party. It has a production value that's second to none, provides more hours of entertainment than all of the previous Grand Theft Autos combined. In short, it's a terrific, unending masterpiece of a game, and one that will never fall victim to an over-exaggeration of its lofty status. It's the defining piece of software for Sony's successful sophomore system, and it's almost impossible to imagine a PlayStation 2 library without it. You can tell when you're playing a Rockstar game. You can tell the difference between a Rockstar game and a Ubisoft game, even though they're both considered AAA titles. Honestly, that's probably some of the reason that Rockstar uh, seems to have gotten somewhat lazy with some of their stuff now. There's not, the, there's not a lot of competition because Rockstar has literally blown the competition out of the water. Rockstar Games have made the most iconic characters in gaming history. Before we're even introduced to these characters, they have full lives and built relationships. This adds so much depth to each character's interactions. Arthur is just such a complex and well-written and voice-acted character. He really made you feel for him and his choices really did matter. He feels to me human, like like, almost like you kind of don't want to do bad things in the game. We get to know his fears, interests, good memories, bad memories. We all know that he's responsible and caring inside, but tough on the outside. He goes on a bit of a journey. He develops as a character. He becomes a better man. And by the end of his life, I feel like he really just is a good person. The words they speak become memes. I like Big Smoke. He's funny, has a lot of memorable lines, memeable lines. He's, you know, in the mission with the cluck and bell when he's ordering the two number nines and stuff. Also, you were supposed to follow the train, CJ, so. The first scene when he sees you and he screams at you like, you picked the wrong house, fool. And later he hugs you. And all the gibberish he says from time to time. No wonder this guy became the internet meme. Even characters that don't speak are memorable. Claude never spoke a word, and yet everyone knows him. How many likable, relatable, like great characters that Rockstar has in their in their catalog? And that's kind of ironic since most of them are serial killers, lawbreakers, will just do really depraved stuff for money most of the time, but they're still likable because of, because of just how they're written. Whether these characters are fighting for family, justice, or revenge, each character was a real, complex person with real motives, emotions, and inner demons. Michael treating world like it's a classic 80s cinema. Their writing is exceptional for characters. Nico Bellic was one of the first fully fleshed out protagonists in the series. You really feel like you're in the shoes of Nico as you're walking off the boat, wondering where has he come from and what is the real reason for his visit to this crime ridden metropolis of Liberty City. He feels like a real human, real emotions. His emotions, his regrets, and his sacrifice for his family is so well made. With some real problems. But he still has his own silly moments. He suffers, he overcomes, and then he loses people and things he loves. A great tragic anti-hero character. He is a figurehead of what most immigrants experience coming to America as they seek the American dream. Quote, I'm sick of punks like this screwing over hard workers because their grandfather got off the boat here, not them. Unquote. That quote to me is quite powerful for bringing the hard reality of immigrants not getting the respect they deserve by bad people. Um, so when I first played Bully, it was amazing how relatable Jimmy was to many other people. How he was just a kid who just didn't like his uh, stepfather. It's just how he was so relatable. It just felt... It just touched my heart. You don't just stand by and watch these characters go through their arcs. You shape them, guide them, and decide who they are. The choices you make decide your honor, who your character is. Does Nico get his revenge? Does Arthur choose money or humanity? The decision is yours to make, not to watch. Rockstar knows that these are games, not movies. You are the character, not the viewer. The best thing about a Rockstar title is the attention to detail. 
From flip-flops that flip-flop to picking up coffee cups that litter bugs ignorantly drop on the street. There are details you may only subconsciously notice, like the ticking of a car engine or the water soaking into your clothes, but only to the height you submerged them. This is clearly made with love to their fans. Like We enjoyed making this. We hope that you will enjoy it too. This is what it speaks to me. Unlike other open world games where it's like the buildings are usually just blocks, you can't enter the buildings, stuff like that. It's like unique. You can enter buildings, shops, buy clothes, eat food, go to banks, go to car dealership, stuff like that. And it's cool how they've also connected each city together. So like Carson City exists in the, in the same universe as Los Santos and Vice City and Liberty City. Lionel Starkweather, how he's in Grand Theft Auto and Bully, he's mentioned in those. It just ties all of the Rockstar games together. The best quality, especially in GTA 5, is their attention to road details. Like, I play a bunch of racing games, but the one thing you'd always notice is that a lot of the roads feel the same. But with GTA 5 and even Midnight Club uh, Los Angeles, all the roads are always different. You always know where the little bumps are and how to avoid them. Midnight Club 3 allows you to change the color of certain things like your exhaust, nitrous perch, or even trim pieces in your vehicle to select colors that the game gives you to choose. Midnight Club Los Angeles. The amount of things they nailed in that game from atmosphere to customization to the characters is something today's racing games haven't even come close to. The city was built for both low speeds and especially high speeds. You are encouraged to drive a wide variety of cars in different classes, which are tuner cars, luxury cars, muscle cars, exotics, and bikes as well. You can also see certain characters' cars parked outside some houses that they own. Rockstar goes the extra mile to deliver the smallest of details. You know, those tiny little details, people eating pizzas and hamburgers in San Andreas, or hell, even stealing cars, uh, or the gradual change in the interior of Tommy's Villa in Vice City and so on and so on. And NPCs had different lines depending on what they were. Examples like the socialite NPC screaming for mommy when shot. Rockstar manages to put everything together in a way where it just fits so well. A linear title like Uncharted or Last of Us, you know, from Naughty Dogs. They really mastered like the character models, the set pieces and stuff, but that's because it's on a small scale. Rockstar Games manages to achieve just as much technical fidelity um, character models, map design, like all that on a huge scale, on a, on a full open world experience, which is really impressive. Midnight Club LA's cockpit view also had full lock steering. In GTA, there are all kinds of mini games and activities that you can enjoy. And you don't have to do some of these things alone. You can call your friend and invite them out to join you. They answer the phone, agree to meet, and you can go get them for the activity. What other games have such a wide range of things to do and yet also integrate the side characters into those mechanics? Just the little details in GTA San Andreas are what gave it its charm to me. CJ had the chance to get fed or even get very buff and strong. There was even lung capacity and stamina, and it actually changes how fast CJ can run, how long can he hold his breath. They hide easter eggs throughout the games for you to stumble upon or to discover while free roaming. A heart in the Statue of Happiness, a UFO under the ocean, a zombie building with major Resident Evil vibes, a bridge with odd details, or a ghost on the mountaintop. Some mysteries are even still believed by some to be unsolved to this day. In Bully, they designed an entire town and school with classrooms, dorm rooms, offices, bathrooms, everything you'd imagine for a school in a small town. In Red Dead, you can see the light pass through your character's ears from the sun. Did you know map changes over time? Like, they are building some wooden sheds and railroads and cutting down the trees. The number of things that they had to have thought of and designed for a cohesive experience is unimaginable. Someone had to figure out everything that you did and make it happen. Shooting a gas tank or a gas station pump causes an explosion. Stomping on a car's roof damages the metal and glass. Guns can be shot out of the hands of enemies. Traffic lights swing in the wind depending on the weather. Burning out your tires too long will cause them to explode. Depending on how long you hold the button, you can leave your car engine running or shut it off. The details are practically endless. No other studio competes with Rockstar Games when it comes to their attention to detail.